Hi boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher. So we have learned that authors write non-fiction books for a reason, don't they? Can you remind me what that reason is? Why does an author write a non-fiction story? Did you say it's to teach us something or to help us learn new information or teach us about things we may not know about? You're right. But sometimes when we read a nonfiction story, there's so much information that we don't know what's important and what's not important. Today, I'm going to model how I figure out what's important in a nonfiction text. And we're going to read a story by one of my favorite nonfiction duos. And their names are Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. And you may remember this story that we read a few weeks ago called A Time to Sleep. And it's about how animals sleep. Well, today we're going to read another story that they've written together. And it's called My First Day, What Animals Do on Day One. Now, I'm going to teach you a secret. When you're figuring out what's important in a nonfiction text, use the title to help you. It could be the title of the whole book. Maybe it's the title of a chapter or a section, but use that title to help you figure out what the author wants to tell you is important. I'm going to model how I do that today using the story, My First Day. Now, in Time to Sleep, we learn all about how these animals fell asleep didn't we? In this story, do you think we're going to learn about how these animals sleep? No. The story is called My First Day. We're going to learn about what happens to them when they're born. So let's make a connection. Think about what, it, what are you like on the day you're born? Can you eat? Can you sleep? Yes, you can eat, but could you, uh, could you eat a corn on the cob? Could you drink milk? Yeah. Could you run up the stairs, ride a bike, dive off the diving board? No, you couldn't do any of those things. I wonder what these animals can do on day one. Let's read. My first day. What did you do on your first day? The day you were born. Probably not much. If you were like most newborn babies, you opened your eyes cried, slept, and drank some milk. And that's about all you could do. Some animals are even more helpless than humans at birth. Kittens, for instance, are born with their eyes and ears closed. Others may have a helpful parent nearby, but are able to walk, swim, or fly almost as soon as they are born. And many animals are on their own from the very start. On my first day, I spent hours kicking my way out of my egg. As soon as I hatched, I was ready to take care of myself. But I was helpless. I couldn't even open my eyes. My mother cleaned me, fed me, and kept me safe. Hmm. Looking at the illustration on this page, I'm wondering if the important thing that we need to learn is that a mommy Siberian tiger and its baby are different colors. Do you think that's the important part of this page? No, I don't think so either. Remember, we're using the title to help us on the day they were born, my first day. So what's important about this is that on the first day of this baby's life, he couldn't do anything. He really relied on his mommy. On my first day, I jumped out of my nest, fell a long, long way, and paddled after my mother. On my first day, I was born high above the ground, and I landed in a heap, but I wasn't hurt. And before long, I was taking my first steps. I climbed out of my egg, stood on my father's feet, and snuggled into his feathers to stay warm. On my first day, my mother held me close, 
so I wouldn't drift out to sea. I dozed on her belly while she floated in the waves. On my first day, I raced to the water. The beach was a dangerous place and I was on my own as soon as I hatched. Do you think what's important about this page is the beach and what color the beach is? No. Remember, we're using the title, My First Day. What's important about this is what happens to this sea turtle on his very first day. And he's all alone. On my first day, I trotted along with my mother. My herd was on the move and I had to keep up. On my first day, I rode piggyback with my mother. I'd have been easy prey for a snake or eagle if I'd stayed behind. On my first day, I made a splash. I could swim and dive when I was just a few hours old. On my first day, my mother memorized the pattern of my stripes. If I wandered off, she could find me even among the thousands of zebras in my herd. Do you think the important part about this page is that in the herd of zebras, there's a thousand of them? That's not important. It's interesting, but it's not important. What the author wants us to take away from this story or this page is that the mommy zebra can memorize the pattern of stripes on her baby and find her in the thousands of zebras. On my first day, I couldn't keep up with my mother. While she searched for food, my striped and speckled coat helped me hide in the underbrush. On my first day, my mother and I called back and forth now we recognize each other's voices and I won't get lost among the other sea lion pups. On my first day, it was dark and I was surrounded by a million other baby bats. But when my mother returned from catching insects, my cry and scent led her right to me. I hope that along with finding out what's important on each page, I hope that you're also thinking, wondering, and asking questions, or at least saying to yourself, wow, that's amazing. That's how I feel about this page. There are a million bats in this cave, but yet the mommy bat, when she comes back, can smell and hear her own baby. That is unbelievable. On my first day, I hatched inside a big pile of leaves and grass. By the time I clawed my way out, I could walk, run, and fly. On my first day, I hopped out of my father's mouth. When I was a tadpole, he kept me safe in a special pouch in his throat. But once I became a frog, it was time to be on my own. I think I'd like to learn more about that. Why in the world is the frog hopping out of its dad's mouth? I think after I'm done with this book, I may try to find more information about this frog. On my first day, my mother lifted me to the surface to take a breath. When I was just an hour old, I was able to swim and breathe on my own. On my first day, my parents stood guard when danger threatened. And my mother did something most insect parents don't. She stayed close and protected me and my brothers and sisters. And boys and girls, this bug is called a parent bug. And it's interesting that that's this insect's name, a parent bug. Can you think about why that's a good name for this bug? Well, we just learned that most insects don't stay with their babies, but this insect does. And think about when it's 
staying with you and protecting you and caring for you. Isn't that like a parent? So I think that's interesting that this bug is called a parent bug. On my first day, I went everywhere with my mother. I clung to her fur as she slept, ate, and swung through the treetops. But my mother had to leave me to look for food. I stayed very still, and my spotted coat blended in with the shadows. On my first day, I curled up in a cozy den beneath the snow. I was safe and warm beside my mother, and soon I fell asleep. Now, just as the authors did in the Time to Sleep book, they end the story with more information about these animals. Boys and girls, the next time you pick up a nonfiction book, use the title to help you figure out what the author wants you to think is important in that story. I hope that you have a great day, and I hope that I see you soon on the Reading Teacher channel.